This is Schmidt in season one of New Girl. Did you see that cleavage? I just want to get my arms stuck down there. Like 127 hour style. Schmidt! This is Schmidt in the final season of New Girl. Daddy, do the special braids. I, I know. They're all, honey, they're all special. Throughout the series, Winston Schmidt really balances himself out in a way that would go on to earn performer Max Greenfield an Emmy and a Golden Globe nomination. However, in the earlier seasons of New Girl, Schmidt is fairly problematic and extremely unlikable. He was narcissistic, impulsive, cocky, and arrogant. He needed some extreme changes to happen very quickly in order for his character to realistically fit into his relationship roles within the show. You didn't used to be like this, Schmidt. What are you talking about? You've gotten so much worse. It's on and poppin'. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic if you haven't done so already. New Girl burst into primetime television in 2011. The sitcom had similar energy to Friends in the sense that the show is about a relatively young group of friends trying to navigate their way through adulthood. The thing that makes New Girl work so well is that the principal cast is just so absolutely likable. Zoe Deschanel's Manic Pixie Dream Girl drives the central focus of New Girl's primary narrative. Her performance as Jess Day feels authentic and captivating. She is also flanked on all sides by breakout performances from Jake Johnson, Lamorne Morris as Winston Bishop, Damon Wayans Jr. as Coach, and Max Greenfield as Schmidt, who initially came so dangerously close to not working at all within the context of the show. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I'll laugh at Schmidt. Great. Schmidt's introduction to us on New Girl is aggressively strange. The first thing that he does makes you almost instantly hate him. He takes off his shirt in front of Jess, who he's meeting for the first time, presents his body to her, and asks what she thinks of it. What about these? These look major to you? Sorry. In the pilot episode, Schmidt's entire character comes off as a somewhat misogynistic, entitled, arrogant man-child. One can't help but wonder if there's enough space in the douchebag jar for an entire human being. At the forefront of Schmidt's character lies an air of unfettered self-absorption, which limits our view of his better character traits. The narcissistic qualities present in the early portrayal of his character feel a bit out of place in regard to the show's overall rhythm and pacing. It's clear what the writers were trying to do here. They were trying to set Schmidt up to be a comedic foil early on in the series. However, imbuing a character with too many negative and problematic traits without balancing them with some empathy or charm isn't the smartest way to introduce an audience to characters. Schmidt, you have a real problem. Throughout the show's inaugural season, Schmidt consistently finds himself in strangely problematic places. He is presented as a terrible friend. On paper, this probably comes off as fun and funny from a writer's perspective. Characters like Schmidt, which are so clearly defined by their inherent flaws, are somewhat simpler to plug into any given scenario. Since we know what Schmidt's deal is, it becomes a source of familiarity to understand how he will respond to any given set of stimuli. Schmidt's relatability is rooted in his endless quest for perfection in nearly all of his dealings, but this often works as a detriment to his character as much as it serves him. Not only does this prevent him from actually being able to consider anyone else's perspective on the world around him, it also prevents the other characters on the show from getting too close to him. When we start to get Schmidt's backstory, and we see these clips of him as a chubby college student, these behaviors start to make sense. However, those scenes don't start happening until you get about 19 episodes into the first season. That's quite a long time to get some relatable justification for his abrasive demeanor. I guess I'll just always be the fat kid with the big dreams. Schmidt is also initially portrayed as a manipulator. He employs questionable tactics at times to get people to behave in the ways he would like them to behave. While the tactics Schmidt utilizes to get characters to bend to his will are definitely fun, there's an unintended function that occurs from the viewer's perspective when watching the early development of his character. We don't trust him at all. It's hard to be on a character's side when you have zero trust for that character's ability to care for others. Schmidt also lies through his teeth throughout the show. He pretends he's related to Mitt Romney, he manipulates Cece into a variety of different scenarios, and he goes out of his way to inflict suffering on his friends. Schmidt behaves, more often than not, like a terrible person. Ouch. This works well for a show like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where literally every principal character behaves in untrustworthy ways and is arguably a terrible person. But for a sitcom like New Girl, behavior like this almost serves as a hindrance to progress as the show goes on. They hate me because of my personality. I can totally change my personality. 
Schmidt begins to course correct as the show plays out, and the writers do a really fantastic job of turning the more problematic aspects of his character into challenges that Schmidt is required to overcome in his quest to be a better person. But his journey is still littered with abhorrent behavior along the way. Take for instance the beginning of the show's third season. Nick and Jess are dating, and for all intents and purposes, they seem extremely happy with one another. Schmidt feels like the two of them dating pose some kind of threat or problem to him, and decides to take it upon himself to do everything in his power to force their relationship to end. At this point in time, Schmidt has a vast understanding of Nick's feelings towards Jess, and he knows full well that Nick wants to be with her. It was just needless conflict for the sake of creating conflict. Are you like a couple now? Have you thought any of this through? Nick, stop being so selfish and just help me. Schmidt really starts to turn corners in his developing relationship with Cece throughout the course of the show. But by normal human standards, Cece should have moved on and not looked back several times over. Not only was Schmidt at one point in time carrying on a double life with her, he lied to her, manipulated her, and tried to control her actions even when he had no business doing so. Running around and imposing your will over others because of your personal dislike in their decisions is not something friends do. And it's certainly not something you do to someone who you have romantic feelings for. Schmidt's increasingly poor behavior started to taper off after season 3. Thankfully, the writers pulled the ripcord at the very last minute before they went too far, and slowly but surely, Schmidt began a long path to redemption. His manipulations became less frequent. His narcissism, while still present, begins lessening. And there's a point about midway through season 3 where it almost seems like Schmidt has been seeing some sort of therapist in the way he reacts to things. He starts becoming more reasonable and starts to feel like a fully fleshed out human rather than his somewhat cartoonish presentation of a well-intended narcissist. Can we just take a moment to celebrate me? Schmidt really did it this time. Winston St. Marie Schmidt is one of those characters that tries to garner the audience's intrigue through extreme, outlandish, problematic behavior. However, the inherent likability of the characters in New Girl makes Schmidt's antics stand out like a sore thumb. Thankfully, the writers decided to change the direction of his character just in time before he did something completely irredeemable. His problematic behavior ends up working to his advantage later on because it gives him a full and complete arc which holds true to the age-old saying, there are no mistakes, there are only new opportunities. New Girl's writers took the mistakes they were making with Schmidt's development and were able to weave them into a finale that made it all feel intentional. It's a master stroke that you are able to accomplish, but his character does end up in a place that feels relatable, and more importantly, forgivable. And that's it for this one, folks. Feel free to let us know what you think in the comments section below. You might see some links floating around in the player window here. Feel free to click on those if you'd like to stick around. And thanks for watching, Nerdstaltic.